if you've ever worked with unidirectional composite, one of the things that you want to do is to see how you can do a comprehensive simulation of its representative volume element so that you can generate all the material properties associated with this unidirectional composite. That's precisely what I'm going to do in this video by walking you through how you create the domain and then how you run the necessary boundary conditions to simulate all the loading schemes that are required, generate stress term plot, even all the effective properties. That's what we're going to do in this video. If you're interested, sit back and relax as we get started with the video. This is the first of a three-part series of videos that I'm making about the holistic modeling of unidirectional composites. And this very first video is targeted at creating the microscale representation of the domain. So here I'm going to show you how to create the fiber, the metrics and the interface and what is the thinking behind this. So as we start the video, the first thing we're going to do is to look at the microscale representation of this unidirectional composite. And I've got a model on the outside here. You've got the metrics. The green region here is the fiber and then the red region is the interface and the dimensions are all given here. So basically it's a cuboidal representative volume element with a length of 120 micron in length. So this is the longer part, part of the model, the axial region. And then the implant dimensions are 100 microns in the length and the width. The fiber diameter that I'm using for this is going to be 68.8 microns. So let's look a little bit more as to how I arrived at that value. So looking again at the 2D representation of this problem, so what you would notice here would be that using the calculation of the volume fraction, assuming that those things are circular fibers, so we can define the diameter according to that relationship. And then if we look at the material that we're testing with, that we're using as our candidate material, it would have a volume fraction of 35%. The number of fiber in this represent volume element is one. And with that, we can go ahead and define and determine what the fiber diameter would be. So if we have a radius of 33.38 microns in radius, now the interface diameter will be 76. 0.755 or 88.38 microns. What I've done here is that I've assumed that the interface region is only 5 micron thick. In practice, the micrograph of this kind of model will show you the extent to which the interface spreads. But in this case, I'm seeing only 5 micron. It could be lower, it could be a little bit higher, but it's just a region that is affected at which you have an interface property that is different from the fiber, different from the matrix. So in terms of the material properties, so we're starting with the matrix is polypropylene and it's got a volume fraction of 65% with a yield stress of 40 megapascal and the other properties are given. So the fiber would be an e-glass fiber with a volume fraction of 35%. The diameter has already been defined and it's going to have also treated essentially as an elastic property. In terms of the interface region, there are different ways you can model your interface, but the approach I'm going to use in this video is to model it as similar, having similar properties at the metrics. However, it's going to be a hardened matrix, a hardened polypropylene. What that basically tells me is that I'm trying to make it a little bit stiffer than the metric because this is essentially what happens in practice. That the interface region is essentially inheriting the properties of the matrix. However, it has higher stem elastoplastic model that I'm using for the matrix. However, the properties will be higher and it will experience a sudden uh, reduction in yield and a significant stress softening as soon as you know it begins to yield and to a capture that's so provided a, a list of you know relationship between you know numbers between the yield stress and the plastic strength that will make this happen so this is how i'm going to use it however there are other ways that you can do this you know by using maybe the fracture mechanics approach but this is a continuing mechanics approach that i'm using and it's just one way that you can try and model this problem so here we are in Abacus and the first thing we need to do is to create a part. So I'm going to create just the metrics first. So, and it's going to be extruded. And so what I'm going to do is basically here, I'm going to say minus 50, minus 50, and then 50, 50. So this is the implant properties and then cancel and then click done. And the depth wise we want to work with is 120 microns. And then, so basically that's the metrics. So we'll do the same thing for the fiber. So I'm going to call my fiber. My fiber will be extruded as well. So what we know is that our, our origin will be zero, zero. And we're looking at the 3.38 and zero for the diameter of the fiber. Okay, and then you click on. So how deep do we want it? We want it the same 120. So that's the fiber. Then we'll do the same for the interface. So let's work up with the interface. I know that I want the interface again to have a circular. So the origin is zero, zero, and it will be 38.38 and zero. So that's how big the interface would be. 
and then we click OK. So again, we want it to be 120. So this way we have the three systems, the three materials that make up this. So let's just go to the assembly module and double click on the instance and then select all three. So we can see the system looks the way it's supposed to be. So we've got the fiber, we've got the interface and then we've got the matrix. As expected, everything looks all right. So then we just need to match the system. So I'm going to call it my UD composite. RVE or something like that. So I'm going to return all the intersecting boundaries and draw a big box around this. So what I've done here is I've merged them into one system. And then if we then go back to the top here, it's created an extra part. And this extra part, we can then do a section assignment. But before we do that, let's create the materials. So the first material that we are looking to create here is the polypropylene. So the polypropylene, according to the properties that we have, it will have a 1.383089 and 0 0.240 as a matrix, as um, elastic properties. And then the plasticity, we are going to do a simple uh, elastoplastic material. So for ET, it will have 6 and 0, 0.0. So that's enough for the matrix. So let's work with the fiber. So in terms of the fiber, we know that it's going to be an e glass fiber, so and it's going to be modeled as elastoplastic. So that will be some 3 e to the power 9 and 0 0.20, and nothing else really in terms of the fiber in this instance. So let's think about the interface. So remember, the interface we are going to model it as a hardened matrix, basically something that has a slightly you know stronger properties as a matrix. So the matrix, they say so to have the same stiffness as. 3.08 e to power 9 0 0.40 again you could also change this to maybe something you know slightly stiffer maybe about 2 e to power 8 but i'm trying to keep the same properties as the interface as the matrix and then the plasticity is really where i expect the change to be significant so we have a range of values of how the plasticity is changing beginning with 50 e to power 6 0 and then the next one here is 20 e to power 6 0 0.12 and 10 e to power 6 0 0.25 and 5 e to power 6 0 0.30 the next one is 2 e to power 6 0 0.40 and final one e to power 6 0 0.45 so the idea is you're looking at a significant sudden change um, post yield softening associated with interface region. So I'm modeling it this way using this approach in this modeling. Okay, so that's what we we find here. So we can then look at the sections. So first thing, the PP section. So we need to create the PP section. So we'll just select that as the polypropylene. Double click on the section again. So we look at the fiber section. So the fiber would be there and then finally the metric section or the interface section. So we need to create this so that we can then associate it with the material models we have before. So if we then, once we've done all that, so we can go back on the top here and try and do the section assignment. So this is material we're looking at. So don't click here. So on tick there, so I select the matrix first. So the matrix here is going to be associated with PP section. That's fine. So I select the fiber. The fiber is going to be I selected the fiber section and then the interface here was going to be associated with the interface section. So it's all properly assigned just to check how I'll switch the material module and everything looks right as it's supposed to be. So we're happy with this setup of the model. Okay, then the next thing we then need to do is, okay, so we could mesh the domain. But maybe before we mesh the domain, what we could try and do is to as, uh, create certain sets associated with the system. So remember, we're going to apply a boundary condition using sets using the edges. So first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to call this my X front. So the X front will be just the face in front. So we'll select that. Then we'll go back and then let's say Y top. So I'll select the top here and then we'll go back. And so we could say Z front. So with the Z front, or clearly I'll press down shift. So basically select all the three layers in front and if we switch this to sets, so it shows us that we have different sets associated with this system. Okay, so we can then move back and look at the back here. So clearly the back is empty, so we need to select that back as well. So that will be our X back. So I could just highlight just only that bit, make sure I select that. So now it identifies that. Then this place is going to be Y 
base or y back so let's call it y base so y base so which will be that and then there will be only one part that is left which is the x z back so that will be z back so and then we select basically pressing down shift making sure we're selecting only the faces so if we then look around you could see that each face is clearly identified properly as it should be so we've got everything that we need there created as it's supposed to be now and then we can then think about meshing so if you select it's recommending 12 so maybe we could go one third of that and apply that so this is fine and then i'm selecting everything here making sure that i'm selecting a hex dominated with media axis we could do hex with media axis minimize mesh transition and we mesh so that looks okay okay so generally it looks all right so we switch it back onto the material module so it looks all right so we have the interface region we've got the fiber we've got everything that we need as it's supposed to be now so we've, we've got everything set up then we can then walk our way down this pathway so we can create our step so this will be a loading step and static general is fine so i'll just work with a static general and then i'll need to output certain history variables but before we do that we then need to create some reference point where we're going to extract our history variables so what i'm going to do is i'm going to query and find certain things here so what point does this represent and click done so right at the base here it tells me it's 50 minus 51 20 so i'm going to put a reference point there so i'll go to tools reference point so it's 50 on the x-axis but instead of working with 50 let me just maybe say 70 minus 50 on the y-axis and 120. so the idea is that you have a reference point that is not on the sample but just a little bit away from it so we'll do the same with this so i find what that point would be so that point is minus 50 70 and 50 again i'll introduce a reference point not at minus 50 but at minus 70 my, um, and then 50 and 120. so the idea again is along that axis but just a little bit further away so we've got those two points and we're going to use them for our analysis for what we're trying to do okay so so what we could then do is we could create reference point in the assembly module for those two cases so reference point one set so i'm going to call that and that that will be associated with this one and then we click there and then again reference point one point two set so that's for the top reference point and we've got that so basically these are the two created in the assembly module now the next thing we once we've got all that sorted out then we can start thinking about how do we actually what are we interested in extracting so in terms of the history output i'm going to have my reference point one set for a start so just reference point one let's call it history output and that would be obviously associated with reference point one and the history output that we are probably going to look out for would be let's say rf1 rf2 rf3 coordinate one coordinate two coordinate three and then u1 u2 and u3 what we really need here is the reaction forces and the displacement the coordinate position is just there to give us a more holistic set of data but we're not going to use it in this analysis if we're working with periodic boundary condition then the coordinate positions will be important but i like to have it you know just in case i want to do this analysis in a different way so but the reaction forces and the displacement u1 u2 u3 the translational displacement are what we need okay so that's for the first one so we'll do the same reaction point to history output so under the set module we'll go to reaction point two and then we'll do the same thing rf1 rf2 and then finally u3 so we've got all those set up and then we're fine so now we've created the geometry of the interactional composite the next step is how you apply loading on this domain and if you want to see that then watch this video next